Now you've lived these parallel non-intersecting lives. How did you end up meeting? So through a mutual acquaintance, uh, I think Jerry, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so a partner at Bear Stearns called me one day, or sent me an email. <laughs> well, I guess sent a couple of us at Kleiner Perkins an email, and uh, and it, I read all my email myself. I don't have it, you know, filtered or anything like that. And so I was going through this one day, and I said, "This is interesting. Podcasting, the, the world of podcasting. I, I don't know if I actually was. I, I really wasn't into podcasting. I wasn't thinking about." It. But the idea itself, I thought, this could be intriguing, uh, depending on what these guys are doing with it. And so, uh, I don't know, it may have been, I don't know how fast I responded or anything, but I, I, within reasonable time, I said, you know, let, let's find out some more about this. And I may have asked one of our associates to do that. But, uh, but basically, I, I took a personal interest in it and in saying, I think this could be interesting, and, uh, and, and reached out and said, why don't you come you know, send me a plan or, or come in and see me. I can't remember exactly what it was, something like that. And, um, and uh, so that's, you know, that's how we met. So it, this is a unique opportunity we have to have the entrepreneur and the VC who invested with them sitting in the same room. And uh, we can hear the story from both of you. What was the process like of making that decision to invest or your decision to let them invest? Um, you know, was this a long, drawn-out process? Was there a lot of vetting that went on? Uh, maybe you could each tell a little bit of your perspective on what happened. Well, he just told a very vanilla story of how we <laughs> met, which I thought was pretty good um, uh, and, and nicely done. Um, at, when we decided to raise money, um, there's two things that happen when you decide to raise money. You give up control of the process or you take control of the process. And, that's where your life changes. Either one can work, but if you give up control, you're surrendering it to someone else. We had a little more experience, so we decided to maintain control. We made a list of the people, not the agencies or groups or investors we wanted to speak with, but the individuals um, from the top firms that we thought we might speak to all on the East Coast. And that's who I knew at that time. Uh, this gentleman, a mutual acquaintance, said, why don't you try Silicon Valley? And I said, well, I've been out there a few times. Mm -hmm. Totally do not relate to us. They don't understand media. They think of everything as an enterprise. Uh, absolutely. Ron was living in Miami. Yeah, I was living in Miami. Most of my work had been done on the East. This gentleman in the middle said, you should just write down on the list the people you'd like to speak to. And Ray Lane, I wrote on that list. I said, this is a guy who's run businesses. He's made big decisions. He's taken turnarounds. He's... he's He's encountered in his world the same thing I've encountered in my world. I would rather have his advice than some other media guy who has worked part-time for AOL and thinks now they're a media guru. So we sent out these emails to the top six firms only and only to the individuals in those firms. The individuals, 100%, the six, came back and said, yes, we'd like to meet with you, and all of them turned it over to an assistant. Whereupon I sent back an email that said, no, thank you. Uh, if I wanted an assistant, I would have called your assistant. I'm only interested in you, and uh, no problem. We'll see you next time around, except for Ray Lane. Ray Lane took it upon himself to see some of this dialogue and said, you know, I, I, I feel something's going on here. If you'll make the trip, I'll give you the time. And um, my partner and myself came out here and uh, presented to Ray and the people he brought in the room. But we focused from the day one. The filtering process for us was to find a person who understood what was going on in his organization that we could count on to make a rapid decision for us. Yes or no was fine, but all that googly mook that's in the books, for me, doesn't work too well. We just wanted to find a powerful thinking person inside their organization, and we were very, very fortunate to he find did, Ray. He did not tell me I was being targeted. He had, I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea, but this all came out after we made the investment, and he said, you know, let me tell you the story. So then that's why I heard that story, is after we invested, and he said, I really... Wanted because he, I didn't realize Ron had had as much experience in kind of the IT world, in the software world. So I thought he was coming from a world, both he and Adam, from the kind of media, music, entertainment world. And I didn't think he had a lot of familiarity with the kind of IT. So I didn't talk a lot about, I mean, to me, I didn't think Oracle had much, re, you know, relevance and, you know, in all the world I competed in. And, uh, and, it, and it turns out he knew everything there was to know about, about me. And he said, I, I, I you know, I think this would be a good fit, and um, and so I and and it has been a it has been a great fit. What I saw on the other side was I had seen 
probably two or three podcasting companies were just starting to get interested in uh, this, this whole world of uh, podcasting, which has now morphed its way into something much, much bigger. It's not about podcasting. But uh, I'd seen a couple of uh, early stage ventures, one out of uh, campus here, and uh, most of these, well, all of these ventures were uh, young entrepreneurs who had, uh, were engineers and had focused on producing a directory or some kind of service that would allow you to find podcasts and maybe even make a few of them. They were way beyond that. Uh, so there were two things. They, they, to them, the directory and the tools necessary to build a podcast were almost commodities to get to a, an end game. And both of them came from the business. So they knew the end game. They knew the end game was entertainment. The end game was to build audience, uh, to, to insert advertising and all that. But not, it wasn't a technical thing. It wasn't a, you know, I'm going to design it and build it and they will come. It was much more we understand how this business works. And the Internet is simply a medium for what, by which we create or shift audience. And, and we really liked that approach. That, that's what I saw that said, this is it, rather than uh, your kind of you know, engineering approach or computer science approach to building a directory or a, you know, some kind of a podcasting service. I see a lot of uh, uh, ventures uh, come across my desk, and what was it that was interesting about Podshow? Why, why did that make the difference? Um, it really was a combination of the, their vision of how they thought this business was going to uh, um, evolve. And they were half right. They were half right. But they were twice as right as anybody else I met. Now I can look back two years. I didn't know at the time. At the time, I thought they were 100% right because they were, and the second reason, they were media guys. They were entertainment guys that understood that the technology is simply a medium to get to that end, that end goal. And so, so I, that, that made sense. So, we, so we, a big determinant for us is, do we bet, if we know we want to be in this market back then called podcasting, okay? Podca it's interesting. We don't use the term podcasting anymore. Pod is in our name, but simply because we like the name pod show, but podcasting represents an audio feed that you can get through some kind of RSS or subscription service and all that. We do much more than 90% of our business is video now. A lot of it's music. Uh, and, and so it is much more a, a social network. Well, these guys have, uh, have watched the entertainment delivered and how it's evolving to young people, although I think the average age of our audience is in the young 30s. Right? It depends on this programming. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but but it's going to be primarily young people that are they're aware of this. So you have to watch how that evolves and change with it. So we've blended video. Video became very very important. Uh, and if we'd have you know, so from a entertainment perspective, you got to do what the audience is buying. What is the audience listening to? What are they tuning into? If you're not going to be aware of that, then forget it. I I didn't see how how a young team that was developing technology for podcast directories and content creation, how they were going to understand that as well as these two, uh, Adam and, and Ron. So, so that made the huge difference to me.